Yo, welcome to this video. This is your boy, your life coach, your mentor, John Belcher. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Go grab your tea. Go grab your sugar. Go grab your honey. Warm it up. Put it in the kettle because we're going to talk about it in this video. But before we get into the topic at hand, we're going to start off with our daily affirmation. Make sure to say it with me. I am rich. I am financially free. I am financially prosperous. Money flows to me effortlessly and abundantly. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am love. Say it one more time. Say it with me this morning or this afternoon or this evening. It don't matter what time you're watching this video. Say it with me. Say it with me with passion and conviction. I am rich. I am financially free. I am financially prosperous. Money flows to me effortlessly and abundantly. I am wealthy. I am healthy. And I am loved. 300 to freedom fighters out there in the world. My superstars, superstars out there in the world. Open up your ears. Open up your ears. Excuse me. Excuse me. I always got a burp for some reason. I don't know why. That be happening sometimes, right? Like, that's probably why my last name is Belcher. Sometimes I just... And I'll never got a burp before I start the video. But once I start the video, like, a burp will just come out. It's just so weird. But anyway, we're going to start with the topic at hand today. And we're going to talk about why marriages don't last like they used to why marriages don't last anymore one of the biggest reasons i feel in my opinion now i'm not married you know i'm not married i've never been married there was a time where i really did want to get married now i don't know yet you know at least definitely not my age right now i don't think i'm ready for that so i wouldn't do something that i'm not ready to do i'm not i wouldn't do something unless i'm 100 percent committed to it that's just the way I do things even in life and business. So that's the number one reason is I feel a lot of marriages don't necessarily last necessarily last because those parties involved or that gets married, they may not their heart may not be in it 100%. You know, and, and that's something that you got to be really really ready for in my opinion. I really think when it comes to marriage, it comes to a lot of compromise, it comes with a lot of sacrifice, it comes with understanding that you're now unified with the other party, the other person you're marrying, and as sometimes it looks good, you know, the, the wedding is fabulous, the dress is beautiful, the suit, the tuxedo is beautiful, everybody's laughing and having great food and having a great time and celebration, but then after that, the real marriage and the real work sets in. You know what I'm trying to say? After that, that's when it becomes you living with that person every day, seeing their real true colors, experiencing their personality, their ways. And part of being married is understanding that you made a compromise, you made a sacrifice. You know, and I don't think a lot of people, especially these days, they're not necessarily ready for that. So they go into it thinking about the glitz and the glamour and thinking about what they can get out of the marriage instead of realizing that first and foremost, the number one reason for getting married is really for true love. You know, it's to share true love and companionship and realizing that you're getting a part of a team with a person and you're sharing this relationship with this person. So the number one thing is I don't feel that most people are 100% ready and committed. That's why I don't think marriages tend to last uh, in this day and age. The second reason, which I think is a big reason why marriages don't last today like they used to, is in my opinion i think social media has a big negative effect on marriages because there's just more distractions there's a lot more visual things at play on instagram on uh facebook on snapchat on even on youtube for example you know it's very easy for the mind to get poisoned there's a lot of outlets and a lot of social media websites where the mind could get poisoned and people can stray away from their relationships and look for outside sources to help them accommodate wherever they feel there's a lack whether that's emotionally or financially or even physically so if you get into you know you, you may be married or something like that but you're looking at all these distractions you're looking at all these hot chicks all day on instagram you're scrolling through all of these instagram pictures and you're seeing all of these hot chicks who may or may not look like your wife or maybe you just could be a greedy type of person you like a lot of women but you got married but you don't you're not staying focused on your relationship you're getting distracted by social media and instagram so also another thing is that people what people do is which is unfortunate is people tend to look outside of their relationship for example instagram they look on social media 
for a lot of help when it comes to their marriage. Now, I'm not saying that that can't be helpful. I'm not saying that learning from other married couples and how they overcame can't be helpful for you. But when you start looking to social media as the end all be all and ultimate answer to your marriage, I don't think it can last very long because whatever you're hearing or you're listening to or you're opening your ears to, it may not be fitting to the dynamic of your specific marriage. So at the end of the day, you got to realize that you got to do what works for you. And that's the third reason I think marriages don't last today is people get into marriages and they're not doing what works for them and their couple and their, their relationship. They're doing what may work for Jack and Jill over there. You know what I'm trying to say? Or John and Kathy over there. Or, you know, Mike and Karen over here. They're worried. They're looking at Mike and Karen and saying, oh, man, Mike does all these things for Mike does all these things for his wife. Why don't you do these things for me? Or she's, or he's saying, oh, such and such does all these things for her husband. Why don't you do these things for me? Da, da, da. And then now that, con that, that basically causes confusion in the dynamic that y'all originally agreed on. And now there's always a disagreement. There's always a fight. Y'all going tit for tat. If you feel what I'm saying right now, if you feel what I'm talking about, give me a thumbs up and drop a comment below. Drop a comment below and say, I seen it all before. Say, I seen it all before, John. Say, I seen it all before. If what I'm saying is resonating and it's making sense to you. So that's the, the reason, right? You can't always look for social media for the approval of your marriage because a lot of the people on social media, they fronting, they lying. They making everything look good anyway. You know, people on social media, you know how we do. We market ourselves to the best of our ability. You know, we come on, you know me, I don't always look the best. I don't always have a haircut or anything. I don't always have, you know, the best presentation. But at the end of the day, we all to some degree, a lot of us really, really care how we're portraying our relationship, how we could portray ourselves on social media. And sometimes that portrayal is a lie. And if you're in a relationship and you get caught up in the portrayal of these perfect relationships and these perfect marriages on social media, well, you're falling in love with a lie. You're falling in love with a facade. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people in marriages, I think that's why marriages don't last like they used to is because social media, because this is the distractions and... Also, you know, just just looking at other trying to emulate other relationships without realizing that those other relationships aren't your relationships. You got to do what works for you and your baby. You got to do what works for you and your girl, you and your man, you and your hubby, you and your wifey. You got to do what works best for y'all. And you can't be worrying about what, you know, Jack and Jill over there is doing, you know, with, with Devon over there and, 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 you know, Simone over there is doing. You can't be worried about that too much as, you know, two people in your relationship. So that's the next thing. The next thing is, I feel that in this day and age, a lot of people, sometimes, you know, people get into relationships because they see that a person has a certain uh, financial status or they have a certain level, level of success or they're looking at, oh, if I get married to this person, I'll be set, I'll be secure. But there's no true love there from the root. So now if you're getting with somebody because they got some things and they got money and they got status and they got success and there's no real love basis to the relationship. Well, at some point, even the things that you're going to accumulate from this person, you're going to get bored of that. You're going to get used to it. You're going to get used to the nice house. You're going to get used to the nice things. And at some point or another, you're going to take it for granted. And now the relationship is not going to last because there was never no true love there to begin with. It was always about what this person can do for me. What type of opportunity will this person allow me by me marrying them? And if you're marrying people for those reasons, and people do it a lot, you know, it happens. Not all the time, but it happens. If you're marrying somebody for those reasons, well, then it, then it can't last because at some point the other person is going to realize what you're truly there for. They're going to realize that you're ultimately, at the end of the day, in some regards, you're using them. And how long will a person be used and be fine with being used without you loving them for them and who they are from the core? You get what I'm saying? So these are things to think about. And back in the days, you, you got to remember, there was no cell phones. Back in the days, we ain't had no social media. The most somebody had was beepers. So let's talk about the next thing, which is a big one, right? is infidelity cheating you know uh i think that's what right that's what it is right infidelity cheating on your partner now in my opinion i don't think it's that back in the days people weren't cheating or anything like that you know cheating is never a good thing especially when you're married to your partner that's not a good thing that's not something to be proud of 
However, I do think that I do think that it was less easy for you to get caught if you were cheating or if you were stepping outside of your relationship or if you were doing something that your partner may not like, you know, whether that's uh, meeting up with somebody for emotional support, hanging out with somebody, spending your time with somebody else instead of your, your husband or your wife. Back in the days, we didn't have social media. We didn't have these trackable devices and te technological pieces to know, oh, you're cheating. Imagine just having a beeper. Ima imagine back in the days. I want you to think about this for a second. Put this perspective and this vision in your mind back in the days, right? You home as a husband, right? And your woman out there, let's say, God forbid, she cheating. Well, most likely, it probably wouldn't have been back in the days because most most of the times back in the days, uh, women weren't, they, they were more so stay-at-home moms than now, right? But we're going to get to that next. But let's say you was a man and you was home and your, your, your wife out there cheating. Imagine having to beep her before she responds to you. Now, a beeper was this device you had where you would get a beep from a number. It would just make a, a noise. It wouldn't be a text message. It was beep, 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 beep. And you would go to a payphone. Imagine this. Go to a payphone. You'd have to call back the number to see what that person is beeping you for. Imagine that because there was no cell phones. So how long, look at how easy it would be for somebody to clear up what they're doing. Or look at how easy it would be for somebody to clean up, you know, after they get done doing what they're doing, their infidelity business and cheating, they gotta, oh, now I gotta respond to this beeper. It could be hours later. By the time your husband or your wife get home after doing what they was doing, ain't no way in hell your ass was gonna catch them. How you gonna catch them? How you gonna know for sure? Unless it's like you going through their they, 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 they pants every night or you checking their beepers and you looking at these numbers and you calling them back. That's the only way you were able to really, really figure out something. And even still, you may not really find out because the person may already know that they got a wife or a husband at home they may not even care so now you really jammed up so imagine back in the days how were you really gonna catch people wasn't that easy to catch people i don't think it means that it was less cheating going on to be real with you i'm just being honest you know I, i'm just being honest yes i do think there's an increase in distractions and more of an opening today for people to possibly cheat but also at the same time it's still limited to do it because of the ability to get caught so easily today you know what i'm saying but you know, understand that for a reason. Another reason why I don't think la marriages last anymore, and this is uh, something that I may get a little backlash from. I don't know. I don't know. I might get backlash from my opinion with this, but I just feel like a lot more women today, they feel a lot more independent, and they have the mindset, I don't need a man. What I need a man for? You know, they may be making their money. They got a good job, you know, and they don't. they provide for themselves. They, they don't really need to be with somebody because he providing or he taking care of the bills so back in the days it was a time where the men were the breadwinners and the women were home having kids they were married to the man and for the most part ain't nowhere to go you got your kids here you taking them you raising them you feeding them how much time you really got to step out of your relationship how much time or even money you even got to risk getting divorced from the man who's providing for you now it's unfortunate that, you know, women are, some women are raised and, 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 and uh, young ladies are raised to believe you don't need no man. Do everything independently. Now, don't get, it, get, me, don't get me twisted. I understand that, yo, if I had a daughter, I would tell her straight up, yo, make sure you get your money. Make sure you get uh, financially situated to where you don't need a man or have to depend on a man in the sense of getting married. But at the end of the day, I feel like as a man really and truly at some point you will need a woman you know just to give you that different perspective just to provide that companion or that nurturing type of vibe for you as a woman i feel like at some point you will need a man you know just to give you that extra protection or give you a different perspective once again give you a different outlook or just to add that type of insight where it's like yo you know what i may be making more money than him but that doesn't make me necessarily better than him just because as a woman, I'm making more money than him. You know what? He checks for the other things that I can't necessarily check for or I don't have the time to check for. So I think people have lost that. That They've lost that sense of team, uh, of, of teamwork. You know, you ever heard the statement before? Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. And ultimately, if you get into a, ma a marriage, you are part of a team now. So everything you do, you have to kind of consult with your partner. You got to let them know, yo, I'm doing this. Or this is what's going on. Or this is how I'm feeling. It's something that you got to do. You know, but I think the more and more you women feel, oh, I don't need no man. You know, or the more and more men feel, oh, I don't need no woman. 
I don't think that's going to lead to more marriages. It's going to lead to more single women. I was reading a report the other day that they were saying in the future, there's going to be more single women than we've ever experienced in life. And I understand why that's going to be. And that's because nowadays women feel like, yo, I'm financially secure. So what do I need a man for? And then that becomes my, my next question becomes, well, if you're financially secure and what do you need a man for now? Well, then what did you want to get married for in the first place? You're going to sip some tea to that. You're going to sip some, sip your tea, sip your tea. So if now that you're financially secure and you don't need a man anymore, so you don't want to get married, you don't care to get married. So your whole purpose in getting married was just for finances. It was just for money. And transition into my next point. Keep in mind, most relationships, most marriages end up in divorce. I don't even think cheating is the number one reason. I actually, I'm pretty sure cheating is not the number one reason. When I did research, statistically, the number one reason for divorce is not love, is not cheating. It's for financial reasons. And that's really the ultimate reason, probably one of the main reasons why I'm a little on, a little iffy about marriage and a little iffy about you know, having a third party or government oversee my relationship, you know what I'm saying? Or have a say over my relationship is because it's like, well, if the number one reason is finances, then so as long as I just got to get financially secure and I could get any woman I want and I could get married. But then that also, I think that's another viewpoint that leads to why marriages don't happen anymore. Because when, a, when somebody gets so powerful, they kind of feel to a point they could do whatever they want because I got my money. I could cheat. I could do what I got to do with somebody else. And my wife or my husband, they ain't going to leave me. So they feel like they got their wife or husband trapped because they so financially secure. It, that power sometimes goes to people's head. And now they disrespecting their wife. Now they disrespecting their husband. And, and, and this is this is what I'm saying. And, you know, another reason why I feel like marriages aren't lasting anymore is because I think some people are just looking at it and saying, yo, it's less stress for me to deal with. Uh, it's less stress for me to deal with by being married. It's less of a worry for me to deal with by having a government or having a documentation binding us. You know, I think some people are starting to feel like, you know, um, what's the point in being binded up when when we have a divorce guess what when you have a divorce look, look, one thing about me i'm gonna tell you right now right now right when we get married when i get married to whoever i get married to whenever that day comes if it's who i'm dealing with now cool but whenever that day comes check this out the same people that came to my wedding god forbid if we got a divorce i want the same people to come celebrate and and, and have fun and dance and, and party for the divorce that's how we doing it over here you came to my wedding come to the divorce too why not come party with us we look we happy we both made our decision you know we both made an agreement she goes her separate way i go my separate way you find somebody new i got i want to find somebody new let's have a party for that too let's spend some more money why not what why are we just gonna throw a wedding and a big celebration for when we getting together but when we about to divorce we can't do that why we can't do that drop a comment below if you feel what i'm talking about say i feel you john say i feel you john give me a thumbs up on this video and make sure to subscribe subscribe to my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you feel in this video and hit the bell symbol Hit the bell symbol. Hit the bell symbol. That's going to get you notified immediately whenever I drop videos like this. But we're going to continue on with this topic. Yeah. Come to the divorce celebration too. Come on. I'm calling everybody back. Everybody come. See what? Divorce. We're going to get dressed up too. Matter of fact, we're going to do it casual. We're just going to get fresh. We ain't going to put on no suits or no, no uh, tuxedos or none of that. We don't need none of that. We're going to still have the good food and the good music. You know what I'm trying to say? We're going to still have the great music. The, the, the departure music. You know, the separation music. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have playing but yeah like i just think people are starting to see like they feel like yo it's like what's the point in being binded up you know what's the point in in just making it where this thing can possibly get messy if we divorce people like the freedom of knowing yo if it's done and it ain't working I don't got to go sign no papers. I don't got to go to court. I don't got to take custody of no kids. We don't got to fight over no kids. You do. You go your separate way. I go my separate way. And we agree to disagree. And we out. Look, peace was half. Whatever you came in with, you leave with. Whatever I came with, I leave with. And we good. We don't got to worry about all this extra stuff. You know what I mean? So that's another aspect of why I think marriages ain't lasting anymore. You know? Uh, another thing is I feel like... That marriages ain't lasting anymore really is is ultimately is vanity 
I think there's a lot of vanity more than ever going on today in this day and age. Look at Instagram. You know, social media has made people more vain than they've ever been in society. Everything is about the physical. Everything is about the visual. How do things look? How does the facade look? Does it look good? But it's like how it looks and what it actually is. When you get to a certain point in life and age, you start to understand that's not the same thing. How it looks and how something actually is, they're two different things, you know, and people can easily make things look good. So I think if we became less vain as a people, as a society, marriages would last longer because now it's not always about what you could do for me. It's not always about how you look. It's not always about these frivolous things. It becomes more about, well, how do you treat me? Do you, do you teach me things? Can I learn from you? Do, do we talk? Do we laugh together? You know, do we have a common ground? Do we like the same things? Do we like the same type of movies? Can we watch the same shows together and laugh about it and, and sip some, some liquor about it or drink some champagne about it? Can we, can, can we make food together? Can we, you know, do we like the same type of foods? Do we, can we enjoy, even if we kind of opposites, do we enjoy our opposites? Does your world come with my world and combine and make it a better world? You know, if we were able to focus on more of those things that matter, you know, and focus on the children and how our arguing or not arguing affects them in a positive way. I think marriages will last longer. I don't think it will, it will end so soon, you know. And if, you know, I think if, if there was less of a... I think a lot of men who are in powerful positions, sometimes they get afraid to get married too because they realize the assets that they bring to the table and what they have as well as some women don't get it twisted there's women out there that gotta pay alimony there's women out there that gotta pay for men who didn't bring much to the table and guess what they separate and they still gotta pay for that man because guess what they got with them at a point where the man was in a very low position they were in a very high position and now they gotta give them a certain amount of money every month just because and lord knows who that man is spending their money on lord knows who your ex wife is spending that money on or with and that doesn't feel good to know that yo half my money is being taken away from a person who i didn't even like a person who i used to argue with all the time from a person who used to disrespect me who from a person who didn't really love me from a person who cheated on me so imagine how that feels so i also think if there was less government involvement in it and it was more of like yo y'all handle y'all shit more of that type of thing make sure you know what you're getting into with this person I feel more people get married. I really do because the control and the overarching control of government and in the courts, the court system, I don't think it wouldn't deter so many people or discourage so many people from getting married. That's just, you know, that's my personal opinion about that, you know, but drop your comments below. Let me know how you feel about this topic. Let me know how you feel about uh why you think marriages aren't lasting like they used to like i could see the reasons i i hear enough stories i i know married people as well as non-married people i know single people as well as couples who ain't married um and i speak to a lot of them so let me know this is your boy jonathan belcher i'm tuning out make sure to subscribe to my channel make sure to check out my next video i'm gonna be dropping soon but before I end this video, make sure to click the link below if you want to become a voice, if you want to make money on YouTube and you want to become financially free as a YouTuber, just speaking your truths, telling your story, sharing that with people. Make sure to click the link below. Work with me. Become a 300 to Freedom fighter with me. And I'm going to see you at the top. I'm going to see you on the beaches of the world. I wish you the utmost prosperity, abundance, and success. Peace.